Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial. Black and white landscapes have the potential to hold a huge amount of power and impact. With colours and hues removed from the frame, viewers can concentrate on focusing on the form and texture within the image, connecting with the location at a higher level. Of course, with various image editing programs on the market, there's numerous ways to remove the colour from your landscape image, but this tutorial will focus on how you can transform your landscape using Affinity Photo software. The software really does take the hard work out of black and white conversions and speeds up the conversion, leaving you more more time for the real work of clicking that shutter. By pushing the pixels further, you can get your best ever mono landscapes, which will help then push print sales or raise your profile higher on social media. So let's take a look at the start image here, which admittedly looks a bit flat, and the image was taken in the Peak District. Our first job is to open up the RAW file in Affinity Photo, and when you do this, you'll find that the image is opened up in the Developer Persona. Before we make any changes to the exposure, we'll switch to mono straight away. So head over to the right side of the interface and click on the Tones tab. Move down and you'll see the black and white option, so click on that. And the image is going to look a bit flat exposure wise. So what we need to do is use the channel mixers to sort that out. Drag the sliders left and right. And you'll see the tones in your image change. That looks about right for now, so we're going to head back to the Basics tabs and work on the exposure a little bit further. The next step is to head down to the Shadows and Highlights option, click on this, and I'm going to drag the Shadows slider to the right and the Highlights slider to the left, just to recover some more detail. We're going to head up to the Brightness slider and drag this to the right, and the Black Point slider, we're going to take that to the left. We're nearly there with the exposure, but we need to add some more drama. So I'm going to head back to the Tones tab, select the Curves option, and draw out an S shape using the histogram. You can see what a difference that's made already. Lastly for impact, we're going to head to the Details tab, click on the Detail Refinement option, and drag the Radius and Amount slider to the right to really sharpen up that image. That's made the frame look full of impact already. Click back into the Basics tabs, and our next job is to darken the sky. When you convert black and white landscapes, one tip is to really darken the sky and make it quite foreboding and moody. To do this, we're going to head over to the left-hand side of the interface and select the Overlay Gradient tool. The shortcut key on the keyboard for this is G. Head to the top of the frame, click and hold the mouse, and drag down. One of the really cool features of Affinity Photo is the red mask that helps you see exactly the area that will be affected by your gradient. Once you've done that, head over to the exposure slider and drag this to the left to darken the sky. And you can see already what difference that's making. We're all done in the develop persona, so to exit this persona, head over to the left hand side of the interface and at the top you'll see develop button. Just click on this. So we're now in the photo persona, and our last job is to remove any dirt marks that might have been on the sensor or on the lens, or any distracting elements in the frame. Now in the photo persona, we can do this in a non-destructive way. So head over to the layers panel, and click on the add pixel layer option. The tool we're going to use is the in painting tool, and the keyboard shortcut for this is J. Before we go any further, head up to the top of the interface and make sure that the current layer option is changed to current layer and below. You can now use the square bracket keys to increase or shrink the size of the brush and take out any dirt marks or distracting elements. So for me, I'm going to try and take out this white spot here on the rock. That's worked brilliantly. And there's another one here. And there's a little patch up here which looks like it might be some dirt on the sensor. And just with one click, that's gone. With the image complete, all I need to do now is head up to Layer, Merge Down, and then I can now click File, Export, and I can save the file in whichever format I choose to. I hope you've enjoyed this Affinity Photo tutorial. Have fun editing your landscape images, and I'll see you next time.